Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is another free to play Raid Shadow Legends video. Day four. We're on day four. We've just got another OP piece of lifesteal gear. Um, this video, I'm going to show you how crazy my kale is already. Kale has become OP overnight. I'm getting all of these juicy goodies. Thank you very much, Flarium. Um, so, yeah, why, why has kale become so OP? Well, I've capped him out at level 50. We've got a full life steal gear set on him. So life steal gear means that he can just regen his health as he's doing damage. We've got him up to 80% crit rate by just maxing out the gloves we got, um, by putting him in life steal gear. Basically, all of the starter stuff that you get has got decent stats on it. So you're just looking to find a little bit of extra crit elsewhere. He only needs 85% chance to crit because he always crits with his A2. Uh, he gets, sorry, he gets an extra 15% chance to crit with his A2. They only need 85% crit rate on him anyway, and we're already sitting at 80. So, not, more often than not, he is critting people right now. Um, we've got a bit of attack going on. We've got a reasonable amount of speed, 169. So, we're getting to a good spot. You can see that I've started to glyph up some stats from the, the Faction War glyphs. So, we're getting to a state where... Kale is actually becoming pretty damn OP. And we hit a milestone yesterday. 985 gems. I'm waiting for this video to show you, but we're buying his masteries. So we're gonna we're gonna roll, get all the scrolls, buy his masteries. This is my decision. You don't have to do this, but I think it massively enhances the speed that you can do the early game. You've got two choices: gem mine first or first person's masteries first. This time around, I'm going for first person's masteries. I think either is a really good shout. Um, what am I going to do? I'm going to go for crit rate. Yes, please. Most important stats. Crit damage. More damage. Yes, please. I'm going to take shield breaker because quite often in the arena in the early game, people are, have got somebody in a shield set. So if we're hitting into a shield, we're going to do 25% more damage. Whatever you would have hit for times it by 1.25. That's what you're going to do instead. Uh, another good mastery though is Heart of Glory. If you're full health, hit for 5% more. So that's going to be good for blasting your way through campaign, blasting your way through uh, kind of anywhere actually. It's a really good mastery, but Shield Breaker for me is better for your early game person who's going to be like a jack of all trades. I'm then going to take um, Ruthless Ambush. So 8% more damage for my first hit. That is going to help me a lot with campaign. It's also going to help me with that life still gear to regen my health back. 8% more is huge. This, this change, by the way, from going from no Mastery Kale to Mastery Kale is massive. It's a massive damage boost for us. 8% more, a bit more crit damage. We're going to get 8% more on people that are, are low health. We're going to get 6% more on targets with higher health, which is near enough everyone that we're fighting right now. We're going to gain um, more damage on our A1s. And once I get to six star, we'll get War Master as well. If you were going for like an arena build, you would take uh, Helm Smasher. But for a standard build, we're going to go War Master. So we've got more damage coming from our build. I also are then going to take more accuracy. It means I land my poison more often. More accuracy, more poison. I'm going to take... I think I'm going to take Laura Steel. Albeit I'm not going to have... Life Steel Gear doesn't gain any, any bonus from Laura Steel, but the other items do. I don't know if I've really gained that much from Laura Steel right now. On most builds, Laura Steel would be good for the extra speed that you get and extra stats, but with a Life Steel build, it's not that great. So actually, I'm going to take Evil Eye. First A1 we do against most mobs, we reduce their turn meter. Um, and then if you look at his skills, so his A1, 100% when booked, chance to land poison. Is a three, uh, forty percent chance of placing poison goes up to fifty. So I'm actually going to take sniper gives me another five percent chance of placing that poison, and then master hexer. If the poison goes on, it goes on for another turn. So that's really nice uh, for me right now. I'm also going to take cycle of violence. So if I hit someone for more than thirty percent of their health, I've got a chance to reduce the cooldown of that skill. So my A2. Whacking someone in campaign can actually reduce the cooldown of other skills as well. This is really nice. So, Kale has just become massively stronger like that. As you saw, he is fully booked. Yeah, fully booked. And if we go into the tavern, 
Um, I've still got five more rare books. So you actually gain rare books really quick, uh, early game. And um, a War Maiden, I've booked just using duplicate War Maidens. She's now got level three, level two. None of the still I actually want a book is booked yet, but that's fine. We'll get, we'll get around to that. Um, and you can see I've ascended my Kale to level four. I'm going to farm some more potions today to get him to level five. That would just give me more basic stats. So Kale is becoming OP with that build. Uh, I actually farmed my way through normal campaign. Yeah, got three stars yesterday across the board normal campaign. So I got myself a Void Shard to go into the mix. Um, I've pushed through and beaten hard campaign yesterday. So I actually did that with just uh, double Kale and War Maiden and Sniper combo. So I used my good champions to do this to get myself back to an easier place to farm, which is actually the early levels of Brutal. So early Brutal, I just blasted my way through. Where I want to get to is the first place where I actually start farming gear, which is Palace of Aravia. Now, I was getting held up by the boss yesterday, trying to, trying to beat this boss before I had Masteries, okay? So I'm going to try it now. First time trying it since Mastery Change. And I think the Mastery should push me over the edge. Okay, so AoE, make sure you're not just running this full on auto. If you run it full on auto, then chances are you're going to uh, cause yourself trouble. What I do is I try and get an A1 from my Kale for a second hit so we can at least get our ability back. And we actually got the proc from that new mastery, uh, which reduced the cooldown of his A2, which means I get my A2 back here. That's actually massive, by the way. That's massive because these dogs are nasty. They, they eat you for a lot of your, your health. So if we can kill the dogs, we've got a good chance of getting ourselves through this wave without casualties. Nice. So we're just going to A1 here. Get our abilities back for the boss fight. Boss fight's hard. This is a tough boss. Especially because he is the negative affinity to our main damage dealer. So again, these dogs are super nasty. I'm going to try and get some damage away on them. Try and drop my defense with my War Maiden. Big nuke. Could have done with a kill there, really. Uh, hopefully this kills him. Does. That's nice. It's only one dog to deal with. Look at that hit. These dogs do a lot of work. Get a big slam out. So the dogs are dead. Onto the boss. This is my second time of asking, so I tried to do it once. I failed my second time, but I think I do it this time. So, providing Kale gets some sort of damage away. But with three people up, we should do it. Getting our hits away. Just going to try A1. I'm, I'm trying to land, land poison, that's why I'm A1 in. It's actually getting a bit nasty now. Come on. Come on, boys. Don't let me down. Triple poison. Didn't get any poison away. Provoke comes in. Don't die. Oh, no. Oh, this is so close. Oh, so close. Going for it again. Okay, take two. That was actually so damn close as well. It's annoying. Uh, again, we just got to kill one of these dogs. Please die. Okay, one of them down. See how much damage they do. It's disgusting. He's coming after my Kale again. Got my triple poison. Hopefully we'll land some this time we did. Try and drop his defense. There it is. Surely this time. Surely this time. Come on. If at first you don't succeed, slap him with an A2. Maybe I should have used A2s last time. Oh, we're hitting him hard. He's not enjoying it. He's not enjoying it. So we're through that level. That's a really tough level. Because we're on Brutal, against bosses, they start to drop uh, potentially rare items. So, I mean, this item's not good, but we're actually getting to the, uh, the point now where I want to farm. So speed dungeon on Brutal. You can start farming gear that you will actually use. Yeah, so you want to be farming your gloves, your chests, your boots that you're actually going to use. And then the next place you want to get to is Vladimir Strait. So ideally, what I want here is my, uh, my Kale to be able to farm by himself. You see here, I'm just stocking up on, um, on farm food right now. So I'm hoping that he can deal with this by himself, which means that we can actually um, farm our champion levels at the same time as farming gear. 
So remember I said yesterday in my video, I want a two for one special. I always want to be on a two for one. Uh, the two for one in this instance is leveling champions whilst actually farming gear that I want to use. And it looks like we're in pretty good shape. Acid rain again. Poisons again, everyone's dying. And this is going to be a full auto clear of a level that I actually can, can farm now for food and items. That's awesome. Um, so you get a free star here. Sometimes you get up to five star there. So I'm looking for five star drops on these different zones. Um, and this is where I'm going to farm for a while. Between the speed ad area and the um, lifesteal area, that's where I'm going to be for a bit now, just farming out gear. So this is awesome. means that uh, I can kind of burn my energy as I want to. I'm going to show you something else in a minute, which is broken for the early game. Bearing in mind, I've played the game for... Well, this is my fourth day, so I've played it for 72 hours, basically, so far. Looks like we're farming this one easy as well. What do we get? Four-star piece, nice. Sometimes you get uncommon as well. You're looking for speed rolls on those. But yeah, we played it for, for four days, or we're on to our fourth day. Should we check this when we can? Buy ourselves the mysteries. Nothing else in there. Now, what's unlocked? The forge. I think the forge is one of the best additions to the game, especially for newer players. It's so good. It's so good. So how do you get these forge pieces? Well, I've been beating Faction Wars since we started the game. Yesterday, I beat the first boss, uh, Stage 7. Day 3, playing the game, I beat Stage 7 and Stage 8. Yeah, with my Kale. My Kale was just running rampant. And we were farming Stage 8 for between 1 and 3 star glyphs. Now, you also get forge materials that drop. See this? And that opens up the forge for me. Now, the absolute most broken early game set is Perception Gear. And we're already getting charms from the daily login stuff, the, the little Brucey bonus prizes that we get. We're getting rank charms. So that increases the chance of you getting a good item. Rank charms and rarity charms, both really good. Um, I don't have any charms to improve of substat, so I'm just going to roll it and see what we get. But you're looking for epic pieces. I mean, anything. Like, this is a six-star piece. This is my first six-star piece on the account, and it's perception gear, which gives me more accuracy and more speed. It's like, bam, this gear is so good. So good for the early game. It's insane. If I get speed roll on this, or if I get, um, I mean, crit rate rolls nice here. This piece I'm going to roll anyway because it's good. Six star piece. It's going to be good. So we keep it. If I got a piece that was just, I mean, that's borderline bad. If I got a piece that was just terrible, I'd just sell it. 54,000 silver right now. That's like over 10% of what I've got. So absolutely beautiful. Look at that. Woo! Accuracy on a perception piece, on an HP main percentage main stat with some defense on it. It's not even that good for a normal person. But I tell you, for me right now, that is godlike piece. It's a godlike piece. So we keep that. Roll the one more. See what else we get. We got an attack weapon. Attack percent crit damage. Look, again, for later game, that would be a terrible piece. But for right now, for me, it's fine. And I've got a few more that I can roll in four to five stars. So really, I want five star gear. Bam, attack percent boots with crit rate. They're okay. Keep them. I'm getting legendary pieces here. HP boots with accuracy, crit rate, and crit damage. They're okay. We'll keep them. You know, it's just like, for me right now, this gear is going to be perfect. Keep. Yeah. Ideally, I'd like to get a speed roll on something. Resistance chest with defense, defense percentage. Just a sell. Really, resistance for me is much later game. There's not much use for it right now. But it doesn't matter. We get more money than we, we paid. Attack helm. Not really that great. I'm going to keep it though because accuracy is going to be tough for us early on. So there's no point in me just selling it off right now. HP chest. We'll just keep it. And you can see that the forge becomes just an area that you can start to bulk up your gear early on. Because early on you're, you're struggling for gear. We're not in dragon yet. We're not in spider yet. You know, we're not going out and finding good pieces. Look at this. Speed on this. We'll keep that. Um, so the forge becomes absolutely like obscenely good. Great, great, good, average. Keep it. Yeah. So we start to get ourselves some items now 
that we can use. Speed boots. Please be their name. <laughs> that is a massive, massive piece. Speed boots in accuracy gear. Thank you. Thank you, Plarium. Um, anyway, we have just absolutely enhanced our sets. Yeah, so, you know, if whether it's your main champion or whether it's your secondary champion, I can now start to equip better items. In fact, the person who I want to put this on is going to be War Maiden, who's going to be my debuffer. And she is going to get herself Perception Speed Boots. Wow. Yeah, we're going to up our, our accuracy by 40 just by equipping these. Um, we do need to be aware of silver cost. So, you know, we've been burning our way through the artifact event yesterday. But she got kind of far. Got herself to the gems and the, the, the bruise and stuff and the energy. I could maybe get this core hammer, but it's a lot of investment for really not much gain early on. I'd love to get this energy, but I think that's probably too far away. We'll see. Um, I've also been doing well on the dungeon divers, considering, you know, we're very early level. So, you know, just farming energy into that has been nice. Um, I've been burning my way through missions. So it's coming together, guys. We're, we're getting to the point where we've progressed a lot in three days. You know, on to the fourth day, we're hitting clan boss. We're doing the easy clan boss right now. Because I've only really got one champion that does anything. But you might get yourself a nice piece. This is okay. That's an okay piece. So you might as well do it. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super chuffed with where we got to. So I will continue to farm now. I will continue to kind of uh, make sure that I keep going with the forge. The next big gem unlock is going to be the mine. And um, we keep progressing at this sort of rate. It's going to be disgusting. Now, this is going to be the controversial point for most people watching this video. We're on a two times chance to get legendary and epic void champions okay this is the absolute time i should pull void void shards but i'm at the point where they've not yet unleashed a champion chase they've, they've not unleashed any sort of tournament to help me get something else get my two for one on shards i don't really need more champions right now because my sole focus is getting kale to 60. So. Pulling them right now will possibly get me a couple of good void champions. But I've, all I've got is time here. I'm not rushed. So I'm just going to save. I'm just going to save my void shards maybe for the next time when I am looking for new champions. Right now, I don't need any new champions at all. I've got loads to do. New champions for me right now would be a complete diversion to my focus, which is get Kale to 60 and start farming gear. Okay, that's it. It would just be a complete diversion. So. Um, I'm going to save them. I'm going to save those. And all I'm going to be using for shards right now is mysteries to just top up the amount of champions that I've got. And as you can see, I've started to get a lot of champions to the point where I can rank them up. So I was hoping for a champion training event, but I can, I can start to do some of the lower ones just to create some room. Yeah, but I'm not going to do my higher ones yet. I want to save that for a champion training event. So everything I'm doing is about resource management, making sure that I get absolute most out of the different options that I've got. Um, but we can just do some of these lower ones so that I can at least make room to pull some new champs with my mysteries, you know, make the 10 space, get some new ones. I've not had a single rare from these yet. Apart, no, I had one Kale, sorry. One Kale from mysteries. Any blues in there? No. You really want to see blues here because it just saves time. Blues save a ton of time. So, look, that's going to be it for this video. The Forge is OP. Getting Masteries early is an absolute lifesaver. And, damn, we are progressing at a decent, decent rate. Free to play Hell Hades, signing out.